Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Today we're in central Pennsylvania at the 10th All Chrysler Nationals held at the famous fairgrounds in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Buckle your seats for some Mopar mania. There are literally hundreds of Chryslers here, along with classic concept cars and drag race legends. Plus, as always, Carlisle's giving away a car at this event. At this time, it's a Chrysler product. Go figure. Joining me now is Chip Miller, co-owner of Carlisle Events. Chip. Love being here. Well, we love having you back, Dennis. We always look forward to your visit. Well, it's you know, it's hard to keep me away, and especially when you got a sea full of these wild-colored Mopars out there. It is beautiful. You know, weather gods aren't cooperating, but uh, we'll get through it. And uh, they're here. The people are here, and the cars are here. There's some survivor cars here too, right? There's a whole building full of survivors. Actually, that's spewed outside of the building. We had to put up a couple tents for them. But survivors are cars that survive in uh, original state in the paint, interior, engine, and undercarriage. So great. So these cars. are all original, unrestored. Cars. Exactly. That's oh, the man. whole key. If uh, if you go 50% or more uh, to restore it it's gone. It's yeah. not a survivor anymore. It's beautiful, but it's but, not a survivor. Yeah. And, and everybody seems to be just having a great time. It's Mopar fun. people are fun people. It's fun. You know, you're, what are you going to do this weekend? Sit home and watch television? There's I don't no think way. so. Unless, no, of no, course, no. it's my classic car. <laughs> well, of course. Well, then, <laughs> after you've been to the Carlisle show. Right. Well, hey, I'm going to get around and see some of these manic Mopars and, and have a good time. Intermittent rain showers could not keep these diehard Mopar fans away from the Carlisle All Chrysler Nationals. The rows of cars with their wild colors reminded me of the psychedelic 60s which was only fitting, for this was the Woodstock of Mopar Mania. Well, Justin, this is a cool 70 Charger, bad in black, yeah. I must say. But what I love is the story behind it. Yeah. You, you built this car, right? Yes, I did. Me and my father built it. Um, it was originally uh, a burnt orange car. However, uh, you had taped a show about three years back at Smoky Mountain. Yeah, Smoky Mountain Mopars. And uh, you pulled out in a black Charger. I and, remember it well. And I, I knew right from that moment that that was the, uh, that was the color that I wanted. <laughs> so uh, you're the inspiration oh, for God, this I love entire her. setup here. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's a gorgeous car. Was it was it black? No, you said it was burnt orange to begin with. How yeah. rough was it? It was, a, it was a pretty rough car. Man, you guys did a nice job on it, though. The interior looks great. Thank you very much. Replaced some of it? Yeah, the front buckets, I replaced the covers and the carpet, but everything else is original. Even, the dash. Wow, that's nice. And, and the paint, I and mean, the black is so unforgiving. Did yes. you, uh, were you involved in the painting? Yes, I was. Uh, we, had, we had to wet sand it six or seven times before we actually painted it to get it, you know, to get it smooth. <laughs> and that was you, huh? And that was me, hour <laughs> after hour after uh, school every day, but it was definitely worth it. Man, it and, and I mean, it. do you drive it? Every day. Oh gosh, I respect that man. Every well, day. you got a 440 under there? Yes, I do. Oh, well, let's have a let's have a peek at that. Oh yeah, man, that's that's some muscle. That's got to be fun, and you got to get looks. Folks got us. I love it. They love it. Yeah, I love it. It's great. It's, well, a, man, it's a head turner. Oh, it is. Well, and I just like I say, I love the story. I respect your devotion. There. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Cool car. Let's go for a ride later. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Ooh, 71 wedge. I love that plate, man. My daughter's bought that for me. My father's day gift. That's cool. And it's an Ontario plate. Did you drive down? Drove all night to be here. Yes. <laughs> You're nuts. Well, now, this is a car that you've totally rebuilt, uh, Randy. A 70? 70, 71, 71 Duster. Duster 340. 340. Uh, uh, all redone this winter in a three-month period. Right back to original color, right to original specs. Nice interior, original? Original, black wow. interior, all original. That is cool. Yes. Now, the 340 wedge designation, That's was that just kind of a... Uh, option package? It's it's a 71 package, 71 year only. Um, it's uh, just more or less a decor package. Uh -huh. Powertrain is basically the same in all the 340s. But still plenty of horsepower for a car this size. 340 cubic inch, 375 horse, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not shabby at all. Yeah, now that's it, a hydraulic lifter car though in 71, right? Yes, hydraulic, yes. Uh, this car particularly has uh, uh, air conditioning, you know, it's uh, kind of an odd feature on a high performance car. This is a great show, isn't it? It's great. It's We waited all year for this, and all that's right. why I uh, spent so much time in the garage so we could do this. Well, it shows it's fantastic. Thanks again. Thank you very much. A few months back, we had the opportunity to spend some time with Jay Leno and his cars. His collection is quite impressive and includes a number of Duesenbergs, quite a few motorcycles, and several steam-powered cars, one of which is a 1909 Stanley Steamer. <laughs> This is sort of the steam section over here. You got a bunch of steam cars. This is an early Stanley. This is a 1909, what they call 20 horsepower model. Uh, this one here is the little faster model. It's a 30 horse. And the amazing thing about it, this is all wood. This is wood. That's wood? Yeah, it's all steam bent. 
The only thing metal is the hood. Everything else, wood, chassis here. These are wood poles. Everything is I wood. didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. This is what they call a dry engine. This one you had to get out and about every 50 miles just squirt all the bearings and get back in. There's no, there's no oil in the engine per se because steamers move so slowly. Now, are these actual louvers or are they all just painted louvers? No, just painted louvers. Again, they're just to give the appearance of gas cars, you know. Um, what you do with a steamer is you have your pilot right here, and you heat up your pilot, just like, in fact, we got a fire going in there already. You can see the fire going in there. Oh, yeah. It's just like a hot water heater. That just keeps your boiler hot. Yeah. And what happens is, then when you open your fuel, your fuel comes down here as a liquid, hits the pilot, immediately becomes a gas, and as a gas is shot under pressure into your burner. That's kind of how it works. It takes about 20 minutes to get it going. See, all it is, let me, is that a little warm? That's a little warm. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> nice and toasty. What you do is you, it's not the prettiest thing underneath here, but it's basically just, see, a big. Yeah, I don't imagine they showed these off at cruise ins or something. Hey, let me pop the hood on this baby. And... Oh yeah, just a big hot water heater. But it's quiet. I mean, it's running right now, you know? <laughs> And when you pull away in a steamer here, we'll, we'll pull it up to the door. Let me grab a jacket here. Let me get mine. There's nothing electric on this car. Everything is mechanical. All pumps. You do everything by hand. You pump it up by hand. You pump up fuel pressure by so hand. Is there carbide lights then? Carbide. Well, yeah, you light those with a match. And then as you, uh, then once you're rolling, see, if you look under the floor here, you have a whole s series of, It's oh, all man. your pumps, you see? All your pumps are under here. You had to be a plumber to work on this, not, not a mechanic. It's really uh, plumbing. You know, Yahoo! Steamers are great. I'm getting teacher. steamed. Steam. That's your whistle <laughs> right here. <laughs> You're actually pressing my pants with that, I that's think. That's right, that's right. That's what it does. But see, once you're moving, all, everything becomes sort of, well, it's all sort of direct drive, really. There's no engine, there's no, there's no transmission, rather, there's no clutch. There's no gears. Your engine is connected directly to your wheels. And, it, and once you're moving, once you're rolling, all these pumps will begin to pump on their own. What's the wheel? Well, you'll see. Here, we'll, we'll take it out for a spin. All right? right. This will be a first for me also. First thing you do is you clear the cylinders. You get all your water out. All aboard? Once you shut it down, it's dead quiet. Hey, John, open the door. This is what it sounds like? Yeah. It's, well, it's quiet in this once it really warms up. Jay loves to drive his cars, and he couldn't resist taking me out for a spin in this locomotion mode of transportation. Man, it's quiet. Yeah. Where'd you, how'd you learn how to drive it, even? I mean, who well, can teach you how to drive this? Well, thing? Stanley's your kind of, like I said, they're just great tinkerer cars. See, once you're moving, there's no gears, there's no transmission. <laughs> Jay, what a trip. <laughs> Woo! You thought the other one screwed up your mustache. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. But see, they're quiet. They are, it's amazing. The only thing you don't have in steam cars is brakes. I was going to ask you about that. What you do in an emergency, if you're not getting enough braking, you just throw it in reverse. You throw it in reverse, open your steam valve like that. And she stops like a train. So I was going to say, again, that's pretty much locomotive technology, right? It is locomotive. The only thing you don't have that's not locomotive is a, is a track. When I blow, watch your people coming the other way. Yeah! <laughs> The train is! Oh my god! Train. Oh my god! Train! <laughs> this is what you call a winker down there. Since water is not a lubricant, or at least not a good lubricant, yeah. what that does is it shoots a dollop of steam oil, which is about 600 weight, into each, each spray of water gets shot with a dollop of oil. So it's, as it's, a carry, it's, it's a carry? Or, or is it rather steam? Each, as the steam goes into the cylinder, and some drop of oil goes in with it. So that lubricates everything. 
Now see, there isn't a gas car that can shift this quick back then. No way. So you just keep pulling and pulling. So they probably had a pretty good race record. Oh, but 127 in 1906. Wow. Stanley held the world speed record. You just hope the light turns green because you're not going to make it. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah, that's pretty close. Make sure it's still got a fire in the hole there. After our whistle-blowing tour, Jay demonstrated the process of blowing down the boiler on a steam-powered vehicle. The way this work, works is, you got two balls right here. One's filled with air, one's filled with gas. Okay. So under pressure, one to pressurize the air. Right. And then as you're moving, you're always pumping air in, which works as your fuel pressure. Then when you're finished with it, you can hold pressure all night if you want, or you can release it. And you'll see the fuel pressure gauge drop. And there's no smoking, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, it's uh, throwing a little bit of gas there, I imagine. Show you what kind of pressure. This is what you do at night, you blow it off. Uh, you might want to stand back. <laughs> okay, you got to open all of these. That's how you clean out your boiler. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of power in there. Yeah. <laughs> Steam's like a knife. You know, superheated steam boil. It cuts like a knife. Cuts you right in half. You always, you always leave enough so you can... Fire it back up, right? No, you don't need to fire it back up. Or just put it away, you mean? Yeah. Oh. So this is just leftover stuff you're running on now. Band brakes in back, was there even any brake in front? <laughs> brakes, we don't need no stinking brakes. <laughs> I mean, they're great fun, they're just, compared to turning a key, you see why yeah. they went out of business. Yeah, I understand. But, but for sheer power and torque. Yeah, it's just so, so oh, yeah. constant. You can, you can spin those wheels in the tire on open throttle. You can just twist them right in the rubber. Because that's how much power you got going through there. It's 700 pounds from rest. Man. 700 pounds from 2 RPM. Just and it, doesn't, it can't weigh too much, does it weigh? 1,800 pounds. Maybe a little less. But see, that's the trouble is your weight constantly shifts as you're using water. You know, so there, you know. <laughs> it was a challenge. Yeah.